The heads of financial investigation departments of eight CIS countries reviewed the issue of possible extradition of economic criminals without damaging diplomatic relations. The meeting was held behind the closed doors. The extradition of economic criminals on the territory of post-Soviet states was discussed on Thursday in Almaty. Nevertheless, it is clear that the decision behind the closed doors is just another formality. We will definitely discuss all issues, but the decision will not be made, as it is not on the agenda today. Journalists were told only about the agenda of 12th session of the Coordination Council, which was attended by the heads of tax and financial investigation bodies of eight CIS countries. Everything else was left behind the closed doors. The head of the Council, Evgeny Shkolov, emphasized the importance of the fight against trans-economic crimes. All of these activities are aimed at creating the environment in which the corruption crimes will not be possible. However, the Europol's chief inspector in Kazakhstan, Ashim Togenbaev, believes that extradition issues within the declarative judicial system of the CIS are being solved only through the political deals. The problem is that judiciaries in all CIS countries carry out the political will of the executive authorities. According to Tugan Baev, post-Soviet courts have a long way to go to reach the European level. In order to attain extradition from the European Union, it is necessary to provide legality of indictments to the court. That's why Kazakh political exiles choose Europe as a place to seek political asylum, just like it was the case with Rahat Aliyev, the former son-in-law of the President Nazarbayev. The General Prosecutor's Office of Kazakhstan was not able to convince the Austrian court in the legality of the official's prosecution. Kazakhstan's Attorney General announced on Thursday the launch of additional investigation on the fact of mass infection of children with Hepatitis C on the south of the country. General Prosecutor's Office announced its preliminary findings a month ago, although they were considered inconclusive. In this regard, it was decided to initiate additional checks, said the prosecutor's spokesman Nurdaulet Suindikov. The Commission of the Health Ministry has rejected the accusations that children suffering from leukemia might have been infected with hepatitis C at the Pediatrics Institute. It also ruled out the possibility of infecting children through blood transfusions. Prosecutors are checking every donor in the country to deal with the situation absolutely objectively and avoid bending of facts. I hope this will lead to the valid legal evaluation. It is important to know the historic truth rather than look for enemies. President Nazarbayev said on Thursday during the meeting with families of the victims of political repressions who arrived for the occasion from Switzerland, Israel, Russia and Belarus to Astana's residence of the head of state. During the mass political repression of the last century, the entire communities of Germans, Chechens, Ponte Greeks, Kalmyks, Ingushs, Karachais, Balkars, Crimean Tatars, Nogais and Masetinians were relocated to Kazakhstan. One of the largest gulags, called the Karlag, which also included the women's prison camp Alzhir, was located near Karaganda. The head of state called to refrain from excesses in the assessment of mass political repressions and then immediately recalled the example from history directly contradicting his politically correct rhetoric. The scale of terror can be judged by the number of executions in the country. Just between February 25th and March 13 of 1938, the military board sentenced the entire leadership of Kazakhstan, 650 people in total. These were the heads of Council of People's Commissars, his deputies, chairman of regional committees and all other secretaries. The nation was beheaded. The Almaty Museum of History opened a special exhibition dedicated to the victims of political repressions. The ceremony was attended by historians, scientists and relatives of victims. The exhibition of political repression history opened in Almaty on Thursday. It was attended by historians, museum workers and relatives of the repressed who talked about the necessity to remember the events of 1930s. There are plans to install a monument to the victims of the mass famine of the 30s in the center of the city, although nothing has been done yet. The forced collectivization hit hard the common people while the repressive machine eliminated almost all representatives of the national liberal intelligentsia. Turar Reskulov, Nigmet Nurmakov, Magjan Jumabayev and many others were purged. The participants of the exhibition found it difficult to draw parallels between the past and present mass arrest of high-ranking officials. The bitter experience restrains talking about the politics. 
Yes, наверное, заслуженно, и есть, наверное, не заслуженно. Perhaps there are both fair and unfair arrests. This can be avoided if people work honestly. Не должно быть такого. The exhibition itself tells a lot about justice and politics. Execution orders can be seen next to documents on the posthumous amnesties for the apparent lack of evidence. There are only a few stands here, as the exhibition does not have its own permanent space. It was temporarily allowed inside another museum. The National Security Committee of Kazakh Soviet Republic was located here since 1934. Some sources say that building was engineered with noise insulating walls because people were executed in these basements. After Kazakhstan gained independence, the building was remodeled as an isolation ward, while one of the rooms was allocated for Museum of Political Repressions. Later, the premise was sold to commercial company as the museum was evicted. Vegetable prices in Kazakhstan have skyrocketed by 30%. The highest cost jump was registered in Almaty, Aktube, Ustkaminagorsk, Katarau, Kostanai, Petropavlovsk, Taldukurgan and Kokshitau. With the exception of apples, all fruits and vegetables in the supermarket are exported from Pakistan, China and Uzbekistan. According to the data of Kazagra market, Kazakh farmers supply one quarter of the natural vitamins market during the off-season, hence the high prices. We do not have a lot of local vegetables and depend on China, Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan. If at least 50% of the local market was filled with domestic products, the prices would be much lower. The Customs Committee reports its own data. The price of vegetables doubles after they cross the border and reach the retail market. According to analyst Gulnara Rukhmatulina, this happens because of numerous mediators who take a margin off the deals. Currently, when these food products pass the border, about $1,000 is charged for a cargo's custom clearance, subsequently raising the final costs. The state has already attempted to solve the situation with the shortage of domestic vegetables on the market. In 2008, the National Holding Kazagra launched a program on the construction of industrial and mini greenhouses. The goal was to reduce the deficit, level out price fluctuations and improve food security. However, according to the president of the Greenhouse Association in Kazakhstan, even first stage of the project failed. Different amounts of money were allocated to farmers depending on the resources they have. They, however, didn't use them appropriately. This week, the account committee said that the project implemented by Kazagra are not productive enough and the budgetary funds are not being spent insufficiently. There is no qualitative assessment and the terms of investment program are violated. Only 20 out of 82 projects planned for this year actually work on the January 1st of 2010. These were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.